Hello, and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr. Susan Oliver, and I'm a scientist, and this is Cindy Oliver, and she's a doc. Last week, I made a video about Gerson therapy, which is a quack treatment that many people have been scammed into taking for cancer. It is a therapy that doesn't work, and it is a therapy that has cost many people their lives. Now, as with a lot of my videos, it wasn't a particularly popular video, but some people did watch it and some people even left comments, which is great for the algorithm. So I really appreciate everyone who left a comment. The strange thing was, however, that a lot of people left comments that had absolutely nothing whatsoever to do with the video. People decided instead to comment about the AstraZeneca vaccine being withdrawn. Like this comment, for instance, AstraZeneca withdrawn, was John Campbell right? Question mark, question mark, question mark. This was actually the third comment made on the video, and it was made after just a few minutes. As you can see, the comment had 20 likes and 162 replies at the time that I took this screenshot. So it was rather a popular comment. We will ignore the spelling mistake, but what on earth does the commenter mean about John Campbell being right? John was, of course, a big fan of the AstraZeneca vaccine because AstraZeneca agreed to provide the vaccine at cost to all countries during the pandemic. They chose not to make a profit so that more people could benefit from the vaccine. And I agree with John that that was a great thing to do. Anyway, at the time that I'm recording this video, John hasn't even made a video yet about the AstraZeneca vaccine being withdrawn, but there's still time and a lot of other people have mentioned it and they seem to be making it up as they go along and that includes a lot of media outlets. For instance, Sky News in Australia led with the headline, AstraZeneca withdrawn worldwide over side effects. And the Telegraph led with AstraZeneca withdrawing COVID vaccine months after admitting rare side effect. And there are many more along a similar vein. And all of them are wrong. And needless to say, many anti-vaxxers have run with the story and got themselves very excited. Like this comment here, which was left by William Makus, MD, on my post about the Gerson therapy video. The biggest scam artists are those who pushed COVID-19 mRNA vaccine since 2021. AstraZeneca has just been taken off the global market. Judging by Pfizer's crashing share price, it will be taken off the market soon as well. We now have to prosecute MDs and PhDs who knew better. And for anyone who doesn't know, the AstraZeneca vaccine was not an mRNA vaccine. But hey, why let pesky little facts get in the way of anti-vax propaganda? In fact, the reason that the AstraZeneca vaccine was taken off the market has nothing to do with side effects whatsoever. It is rather more mundane. The AstraZeneca vaccine was never updated for new variants, so there is no longer any demand for the product. AstraZeneca is withdrawing it because no one is buying it anymore. Most people are now protected from severe disease and death from COVID owing to their initial two or three vaccine doses. Those who still require or desire further vaccine doses are getting vaccines for updated variants. A bit like people who get annual flu vaccines get the latest vaccine, not the one from a few years ago. It is of course true that the AstraZeneca vaccine can cause a rare side effect. The side effect is thrombosis with thrombocytopenia syndrome, or TTS for short. And this is a form of blood clots accompanied by low platelets. And this rare side effect can also occur following the Johnson & Johnson vaccine and a similar condition can occur in people receiving heparin. 
The exact mechanism behind why the vaccine causes this rare side effect is not known for sure, but it is believed that a protein in the blood called platelet factor 4 is attracted to the adenoviral vector used in the AstraZeneca vaccine, and in some people this results in antibodies that can activate platelets and cause clotting. We now know that this can also occur following infection with adenoviruses, which in most people just cause common cold-like symptoms. Prior to the issue being recognised in people receiving the AstraZeneca and Johnson & Johnson vaccines, it wasn't known that it could also occur following infection with adenoviruses. But after it was identified with the vaccines, they checked for the virus in people who had the same symptoms but hadn't received the vaccine. Of course, most people who are infected with adenoviruses will be just fine. It is only susceptible people who will develop TTS, just like only susceptible people developed it following vaccination. We also know that thrombotic events can also occur following COVID and that the incidence is much higher than that following the AstraZeneca vaccine as are other adverse events like ischemic stroke and myocardial infarction. But this rare side effect has nothing to do with why the vaccine was recently withdrawn from sale. We know this because the rare side effect has been known about since early 2021. In fact, it was widely publicised in April 2021. Now, you may be wondering why the vaccine wasn't withdrawn from sale when the side effect was first identified. The reason is that for most people, the risk of not getting the vaccine was still much higher than the risk of getting it. An analysis was done at the time that the rare side effect was identified. And what they showed was that even for people who were at low risk of contracting COVID, they still had a greater risk of ending up in the ICU every 16 weeks than they did of getting the side effect from the vaccine. The exception was those aged 20 to 29. And for them, it was recommended that they didn't get the AstraZeneca vaccine and instead waited for a different vaccine to become available. Because there weren't unlimited supplies of vaccines, it wasn't possible for everyone to get an alternative immediately. And so the vaccine was recommended for most people as it would reduce their overall risk. For people with a medium exposure risk, the benefits of getting a vaccine over the potential harm from the vaccine was even greater. And for these people, the benefits were also greater for those aged 20 to 29. And the risk from not getting the vaccine was even greater again for those at high exposure risk from COVID. But what would have happened if the AstraZeneca vaccine was withdrawn from sale as soon as the rare side effects were identified? We know that in the first year of vaccines becoming available, there was a severe shortage and not everyone was able to get one when they wanted it. In fact, in Australia where I live, for a while we couldn't get any at all because Europe was refusing to let them be exported to Australia. They argued because we had COVID largely under control, we should wait. If AstraZeneca had been withdrawn from sale, even less people could have been vaccinated in a timely manner. It is estimated that in its first year of use, the AstraZeneca vaccine saved 6.3 million lives, which is more than any other vaccine. If it had been withdrawn from sale, most of those lives would have been lost. But what was with all the news reports from about a month ago claiming that AstraZeneca had only just acknowledged that their vaccine can cause rare side effects? Well, basically, they're bollocks. The information came from lawyers who are suing AstraZeneca on behalf of people who received the vaccine 
in the UK. They released a press release which said, AstraZeneca formally admits that its COVID-19 vaccine can cause rare side effect. In court documents, AstraZeneca has admitted for the first time that its COVID vaccine can cause a rare side effect. The media all ran with the story without doing any basic fact-checking. AstraZeneca weren't admitting it for the first time at all. Their product information was updated in April 2021 to warn people that the rare side effect could occur at the same time as the UK government alerted the public to the potential rare side effect. This extract from their product information makes it very clear that the side effects can occur. And this document was last updated in August 2021. So it hasn't been updated recently. And further evidence of this is that a lot of people who were initially suing AstraZeneca have now dropped their legal cases. And the reason that they have dropped their cases is because their family members who died after receiving the AstraZeneca COVID vaccine received it after the risk of blood clotting following the vaccine had been published. They were told that their claim was unlikely to succeed because a leaflet handed out at vaccination centres warned of extremely rare cases of blood clots with low platelets after vaccination with the AstraZeneca shot. And this makes sense because you can't really sue someone for causing something that they warned you could happen. The families are still eligible, though, to receive a payment through the UK Vaccine Damage Payment Scheme, as is everyone who has a genuine vaccine injury, although you do need to be at least 60% disabled to receive the payment, which does seem a bit unfair. There are some people who are still suing AstraZeneca. These are the people who received their vaccines before the rare side effect was known. Now, I'm not a lawyer, so I have no idea whether they have a good case or not, but it is clear that the people are definitely vaccine injured and no one is disputing that. If they are successful, AstraZeneca won't actually have to pay them compensation. Any compensation will be paid by the UK taxpayer because that was part of the agreement for the supply of the COVID vaccine. Now, I'm sure some people aren't happy about this, but you need to remember that AstraZeneca supplied the vaccine at cost. They didn't make any money from it. Without this arrangement, they would have been crazy to supply any vaccines. And if that had happened, a lot more people would now be dead. In an ideal world, all medicines would be 100% safe and 100% effective. But we don't live in an ideal world. We live in the real world. And in the real world, you have to weigh up the risks and benefits for any intervention. It is tragic that some people did suffer rare side effects from the vaccines. But it would be even more tragic if the vaccines hadn't been available the number of lives lost would be several orders of magnitude greater, as would the number of those left permanently disabled. If you'd like to look further into the data I've presented, I've provided links in the video's description. And please remember this video is about the science, but you shouldn't take it as medical advice. For that, you should speak to your medical practitioner. If you've got this far, thank you for listening. And if you've liked, shared or commented on the video, double thank you because that helps the algorithm and means that more people will see the video. And of course, as I sort of mentioned at the beginning, it, your comment doesn't even have to be anything about the video. That's all fine for the algorithm. And of course, thank you to everyone who has bought me a coffee or a little sleepy Cindy who's got our back to us a treat. We really appreciate your support. We will be continuing to make videos about the science in the future. So if you'd like to join the cool kids and stay informed, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.